You finally got your e-bike, assembled it, and you've ridden it all over your neighborhood. Now you want to take it someplace new to ride. That's where a rack like the Hollywood Racks Sport Rider e-bike rack comes in. It's designed to mount onto any standard two inch trailer hitch and it's built specifically to handle bikes weighing up to 80 pounds each. Now you might be thinking, I already have a bike rack that's capable of handling two 40 pound bikes, so it should be able to handle one 80 pound bike, but that could be a very expensive mistake for you, one that could actually put others at risk. E-bikes weigh several times what a non-e-bike equivalent might weigh, so unless a manufacturer of your bike rack states that each position can handle the weight of your e-bike, don't use it. The forces applied to a rack are a square of the difference in weight. My wife's 69 pound Rad Mini Step Through 2 actually exerts nine times the forces of her old conventional mountain bike when bouncing around on the back of a truck. As you'll see, Hollywood Racks engineered this rack in several different ways to be able to handle not only the forces of one heavy e-bike, but two heavy e-bikes. I don't fault people for looking at this rack and thinking it's exactly the same thing as a standard bike rack. Everything about this rack is beefed up to be able to handle the extra forces generated from the mass of two e-bikes. The main tubing of this bike rack is actually the same kind of tubing that's used to make trailer hitches. And it's a lot heavier duty than you're gonna find on a lot of bike racks. The support arms are heavier duty and they're actually double walled until about there Everything is bolted together with this reinforcing plate. The pivot bracket is much heavier duty. The pins that lock the rack are both much heavier duty. The center brace is also much heavier duty than you'll find on a lot of bike racks. That includes the bracket, that includes the tube, and that includes the hooks as well as their mounting system. Here's where the difference in rating really matters. These wheel loops are not only heavier duty out here and in here and in the mounting bracket here, but the straps themselves are a lot heavier duty and how they attach here and how they buckle there. These have sliding cut guards, sliding wear guards that aren't here to protect your bike because these straps themselves are not going to damage your wheels. This is so you can slide protection between things like sharp spokes or sharper things on your wheel and the strap itself. That's gonna help your strap stay intact, locking your bike down no matter how much the back of your vehicle might be bouncing around. Hollywood Racks actually includes two of these adapters that make it easier for you to use this rack with bikes that have 20 inch wheels, like our Rad Mini Step Through 2. This adapter simply lifts the back of the bike so that when the tire is fully seated and locked down by that strap, you don't have rubbing with the derailleur and the derailleur hanger that could damage either the bike or the rack. Hollywood racks are known for their patented no wobble hitch system. Instead of using a hitch pin hole, the racks actually have a slot with a bracket inside the tubing that captures the hitch pin. Turning a tensioning lever eliminates the slack between the receiver and the rack without the need for any tools. The anti-wobble system is actually part of what makes their racks so heavy duty. You can see how the rack will move up and down until I tighten the anti-wobble system. That's not just something to reduce noise. That actually reduces the amount of forces that get generated as your vehicle bounces up and down. By putting compression on the hitch pin with this tensioning rod, this rack actually sandwiches your receiver between the hitch pin and this welded stop. I don't care how long I might have had a rack sitting inside of my receiver before I mount anything to it. I am going to visually inspect the hitch pin and make sure it is properly installed and locked with the lock or with the cotter pin, depending upon what kind of hitch pin you're gonna use. Next, I'm gonna make sure that this support pin is in place. This is what you remove in order to tilt the rack away from your rear hatch. The rack will lock in place with the quick release pin, 
but you want this in place as well because this actually doubles up the amount of support that your rack has once you have your bikes in place. Next, I'm gonna unlock the vertical support simply so I can remove the hooks and I'm gonna place them within easy reach. When you put this together, you'll see you'll have the option of putting a screw on the back of the support that will prevent people from being able to slide the hooks off and walk away from them. But I don't have that installed because I wanna be able to take the hooks off when I'm putting bikes on or off. I'm gonna put this back down and now open up all of the straps and move them so that they are out of the way of the tires as I put them in the loops. And that's all I do to prepare the rack itself. Now it's time to prepare the bikes. The first thing I'm gonna do is to remove their batteries. This doesn't just make them lighter so it's easier for you to put them on the rack and take them off when you get to your destination. It reduces the amount of forces that your rack has to deal with and transport. But most of all, it's a safety issue because this way is the only way you can be certain that you're not gonna accidentally hit the throttle while you're manipulating your bike onto or off a rack. Next part is gonna be based upon your personal comfort level with people walking around your bikes while they're on the back of your vehicle. You might wanna consider removing anything that's easily removable by somebody who might wanna snatch it for themselves. For me, I'm gonna leave the bags on the bikes because they take a while to get off and I'm never gonna be parking my truck with my bikes attached somewhere where I'm gonna be walking away from it Mainly, I put the bikes on there, I drive to the destination, we take them off, we ride them, and then we put them back on and come straight home. However, I did take the light off that was mounted here because this is just a matter of pressing down that lever and it pops right off. You're gonna wanna mount your heaviest bike, your largest bike, closest to your vehicle because that will reduce the total amount of forces that the rack has to deal with. With this, I'm gonna walk it from the first position into the second position. I kind of drive it a little past the front wheel loop there. I grab the rear brake and just rotate it up and let the front wheel sit in the loop. Now I'm gonna lift and place it in the rear loop. I think at this point, <laughs> it's important to point out that this is a worst case scenario. I'm using a through bumper receiver and so this rack is way higher then it's going to be on most vehicles out there, especially any that are using a standard under frame receiver. Now I'm gonna walk this back into where it's gonna sit. In order to do that, I do need to let this rock forward a little bit so that the rear tire gets unlocked from the loop. And now I'm going to put it all the way in the back position. I'm gonna raise the center support, lock it in place, and now I'm gonna grab the longer of the two hooks because that goes on first, and I'm not gonna snug it down, I'm just gonna have it there holding the bike loosely until I get the straps done, and you'll see why. I have that kind of loose because in order for the strap to work correctly, you want it passing between spokes in the shortest possible path between its mount and the locking bracket. You might have to lift a wheel and rotate it a little bit to get the proper fit. And by having this hook not actually snug down onto the bike, it gives you a little bit of play. And I'm gonna do the same with the rear. In both instances, I'm looking to see where the strap is gonna rub on something sharp like the spokes and I'm moving the wear guard on the strap to be in line with those sharper points. Now that those straps are snug, I'm gonna press this down you just want to snug it, you don't want to muscle it down. Now that that's in place, I'm actually going to lock it. And this isn't for security against thieves, it's for security against me bumping this as I'm putting the other bike in place, 
or from it getting vibrated to where this actually loosens and then the support loosens on your bike. In order to repeat that process with this Rad Mini Step Through 2 that doesn't have a top tube, I need to install this adapter. It's basically a fake top tube. This costs $35, which I think is actually a pretty good deal for how heavy duty and well constructed this is. Because I've got a bag back here, I just like to hook on to the seat post first. And then in the front, and you'll see it's still gonna be loose. You just wanna make sure that it's seated all the way down because that's where the force is gonna be. This also has folding pedals. You might have already noticed I have the inside pedal folded. You don't have to do that, but it's actually a nice feature to be able to use. Just as with that bike, I'm gonna push this past the loop, lock the rear brake, and just rock the front wheel into place. Super easy. Now I'm gonna lift the back of the bike into place, and you can see how this adapter is holding the wheel up higher so that the derailleur, which is on the other side, doesn't get hooked up into the tire loop. I'm gonna take this hook, which is the shorter one, and do the same thing. Oop, that's a little too tight. And so it gives me play. The spoke spacing on these wheels is narrower than the wear guard. So that makes it very important that I get the wear guard between those spokes but with as short a distance as possible. Between the two ends of the strap. And then lock it down and repeat the same in the rear. The rear is a little trickier because you need to make sure that the strap passes underneath the chain. That's locked down, and now I'm gonna snug this down. I'm not gonna gorilla it, just until it's, it's snug, and now I'm gonna lock it in place as well. Now I'm gonna give everything a good wiggle test. It's normal for the bikes to be able to move a little bit, but that's not gonna be a problem for the bikes or the rack. At this point, you could use the included cable lock to add more security to the bikes on the rack. And one of the ways that Hollywood Racks makes things easier on its customers is everything that comes in the box is keyed exactly the same. So this key that I use to lock the retention hooks works on the included cable lock, and it actually works on the included locking hitch pin, which I'm not using because this lock actually doesn't fit up inside of the bumper where the back of the receiver goes. I'm actually not gonna use this either because I'm not worried about somebody grabbing these off of my truck when I'm stopped at a stoplight, but I do think that it's actually not just convenient, but really smart that you only need to use one key to unlock all of them. Removing the bikes involves basically reversing those steps, which I was able to casually do in under two minutes. Again, this is still a worst case scenario given how high my hitch is, yet it is still very manageable for me. Of course, a lower hitch height would mean a lower rack, which would mean less lifting. It's the same challenge I have with pretty much every rack that mounts on this hitch and is not unique in any way to this one. Hollywood Racks is the only brand of bike rack sold by Rad Power Bikes the most popular brand of e-bike in the US, and for good reason. Hollywood Racks has been in business since 1973, and they put all of their experience into making sure that this rack is as strong as it needs to be without being priced beyond what most folding hitch-mounted bike racks cost. The rack comes with everything shown in this video, including the tools to assemble it, with the exception of this top tube adapter. Your bike is only gonna need it if it doesn't already have a top tube. If you're interested in getting one for yourself, using the link in the video description to do so will help the channel. Be sure to subscribe for more e-bike videos. I really appreciate you watching the Tech of Tech and hope to see you next time.